Hello everyone, welcome to the first video in my raft series. This first walkthrough will basically take you from the starting point when you're just floating on four boards in the ocean and have nothing but a plastic hook to gather resources to the first point of interest objective. It took me about two hours to get to this first objective. I'm sure there are people out there who can do it much faster, but I've never been one to rush. The first thing you have to do in this game is gather resources. You're going to need a lot of wood planks, plastic, and palm leaves to get up and running, as well as some scrap and stone. Your first priorities should be to craft a simple purifier, a simple grill, an empty cup, a wooden spear, and a wooden fishing rod. I'll put the recipes for those up on the screen, but in total those items will require 26 wooden planks, 8 plastic, 6 palm leaves, 14 rope, which will take 28 palm leaves to make, and 1 scrap. All of those items will be floating by your raft, just waiting for you to pick them up or grab them with your hook, with the exception of the scrap, which you can get from the floating barrels or chests. I also like to build a paddle early on. It's not really necessary until you start paddling towards islands but I like to use it to get closer to barrels if they're just out of reach. For that you need four planks, six plastic, and two rope. Resist the urge to stop at the first couple islands you see. There's no point until you've taken care of expanding your raft a bit and gotten your food and water needs taken care of. In this video I captured, I had the game set to easy. If you have it set to normal, your food and water depletes much faster and becomes even more important to fish and purify water early on. To expand your raft, you will need to craft a building hammer, costing 4 wood and 2 rope. You will also need several stacks of plastic and wood to expand your raft to fit all the stuff you need to build. Floating floor panels cost 2 wood and 2 plastic each, and that adds up fast. You will also need wood later on to build an elevated portion of your raft to hold your antenna and receiver, so hoard that wood and plastic. Meet Bruce the Shark. He will attack your raft every five minutes, and if you leave him to it, he will destroy the section of your raft that he is biting. You can easily fend him off by poking him in the face three times with the wooden spear that you made. Later, when you upgrade to a metal spear, you will only have to poke him twice. As you are floating aimlessly in the ocean, you will occasionally come across abandoned rafts. It's a good idea to paddle towards these and explore them, as they always have a chest on board that will give you some very helpful resources. These rafts sink immediately when you set foot on them, so be sure to loot quickly and get back to the safety of your own raft. Collecting barrels early on isn't just about resources. When looting barrels, you will eventually find two blueprints, the receiver and the antenna. These are vital for progressing in the game. Once you have looted them, it will give you a notification that you can now research that item. Once you have learned it, you may discard the actual blueprint. I usually just throw them overboard back into the ocean. You are now able to research how to make the receiver and the antenna once you build a research table.
At this point, you will surely notice that your food and water meters are getting pretty low. If you haven't already, it's time to build your simple purifier and simple grill. You will hopefully have expanded the area of your raft by now. When Bruce the Shark attacks, he will only attack tiles at the edge of your raft, and if he destroys a tile, it will also destroy anything built on top of it. Because of this, you will want to place any important items like the purifier and the grill at least one tile from the edge of your raft. To begin using the purifier, you will need to craft an empty cup to collect seawater and dump it into the purifier. You can use the grill to cook the potatoes and beets that you've been getting from barrels. Or you can craft a fishing pole and catch fish to cook. Both the purifier and the grill need to be loaded with wood planks to function. Now that you have your basic needs covered, it's time to start exploring islands. It is very important to use an anchor when exploring islands, or your raft will just float away without you on it. And you don't really want that. This just means that you will have to have found at least four stone in barrels before you stop at your first island. Once you have your anchor, attach it to the side of your raft, and when you are close, drop it in the water. There are a few different sizes of islands in raft, this one is the smallest. There are two aspects to an island in raft, the land and the reef underwater. The reef is the most important early on. To safely explore an island reef, you need to fish up some herring and pomfret and make a shark bait to deal with the Bruce problem. If you just jump in the water and start exploring without distracting him first, he will attack you repeatedly until you are dead. Now, there are two different ways you can deal with Bruce that will allow you to explore. You can just toss the bait in the water and then go diving, or you can toss the bait in the water and stab Bruce until he's reduced to a tasty meal. Distracting the shark will buy you a little over a minute of safe diving time, and killing Bruce, while it does take a while to do, will buy you about three minutes. I prefer killing the shark because the meat is great to have for food later. This way does take a while, so if you're not the type of person who's okay with staring at a bundle of fish for 7 or 8 minutes while occasionally stabbing a shark, feel free to just make a couple shark baits and get on with your day. Also, after killing a shark, if you have room to store them, make sure you keep the shark heads. They can be useful for making biofuel later in the game. While underwater, you're going to be collecting clay, sand, scrap, seaweed, copper, metal, and stone. These will all be important later, with stone being the least important. You will also come across large clam shells. You can grab one to use in your research table, but you won't need these until later and they are fairly common. You will also occasionally find a chest on the reef floor or in a hidden cave. These are always worth grabbing. Everything except for the clam, chests, and seaweed require a salvage hook to collect. Keep an eye on your breath meter while diving. If it reaches zero, you will start to drown and lose health. You will die very slowly on easy difficulty, but on harder difficulty levels, you will die faster. It is important to focus on clay and sand early. You will need to build a smelter to progress in the game, and you will need seven clay bricks to build one. Six for the smelter, and one for the research table. Each clay brick is two clay and two sand, so you will need 14 of each before you can progress. If Bruce respawns while you are diving, he will start attacking you. 
You can mitigate some of this damage with your spear. If you swim at him while he is charging you and you stab him with the spear as his mouth is open to bite you, you can stop him from biting. On the surface of the island, you will find fruit trees and ground fruit. The fruit trees require a stone axe to harvest and the ground spawn fruit can just be picked up. The fruits collected on the island are a good source of water and a decent source of food and they can be saved and used to make powerful drinks later in the game. Seeds can drop from the fruit. Feel free to save these to plant later if you have space to store them. The various colored plants around the island can be harvested and used to make paints for decorative items, but they are not important for progression so do not worry about looting them at this point. Once you've harvested everything you want from an island and reef, simply lift up your anchor and move on to the next one. To learn new recipes, you will need a research table. It costs 14 wood and 2 scrap and takes up 2 squares of space on your raft. You will be using this for the rest of the game every time you find a new blueprint to learn. Once you build it and interact with it, you will see a list of items to research with the required reagents beside it. You can then drag items out of your inventory into the empty square and hit research. It will add that item to every spot that it's needed for research. A lot of the items you find in game can be added to the research table, so it's worth checking when you find something new. Once you unlock a recipe, it will move to the top of the interface and a learn button will appear next to it. The most important thing to research right now is the smelter, and for that you will need to add plank, scrap, nail, and a dry brick to the table. The first three items are straightforward. To get a dry brick, you need to first make a wet brick out of two clay and two sand, and then set the wet brick on the deck of your raft and let it dry in the sun. It will take five minutes for a wet brick to turn into a dry brick. Once it's adequately dried, you'll be able to pick it up and use it. Once you have added the plank, scrap, and nail to the research table, it will open up the ability to craft collection nets. They are resource intensive to build at 6 wood, 8 rope, and 2 scrap each, but they will pay back their cost quickly. Simply attach them to the front of your raft and you'll start collecting resources passively while you float through the ocean. Each net can hold up to 10 items before they need to be emptied to make room for more. Now you have the smelter researched, you just need to find enough clay and sand to build one. Now that you have your smelter built, place it on your raft, load it up with planks, and start smelting. To research and build your antenna receiver array, you will need to smelt a total of 7 metal, 14 copper, and 6 seaweed into vine goo. One metal ingot, one copper ingot, and one vine goo are needed for the research table. This will allow you to learn how to make a simple battery and a circuit board. Make one circuit board and add it to the research table, allowing you to learn how to make a receiver. At this point, you should know how to make the receiver, antenna, and a simple battery. Everything you need to know to reach the first point of interest objective. 
You just need to gather and smelt the resources to craft these items, and then we will move on to the receiver antenna setup. I spent about an hour in game preparing to set up my receiver and antenna array. During that time I cleared some islands, built a sail, a second smelter, and more collectors. Now it's time to talk about the antenna setup. You will need to have everything elevated at least one block above the surface of your raft. You can use wooden poles or walls for this and then build floor slash roof tiles on top. You will need some sort of support every two floor tiles. You can build a ladder or stairs to reach that level. This will take a lot of wood and nails, so hopefully you've been stockpiling resources. Your platform will need to be big enough to have a minimum of two squares between each antenna and your receiver, and a minimum of 3.5 squares between each antenna. I'll include a diagram for the best setup. Once your antenna and receiver are set up properly, you can put a battery in your receiver and turn it on. The first set of coordinates will already be inputted and your destination will show up on the screen. Green markers indicate islands and the blue marker indicates the location of your point of interest objective. The distance is marked in meters below the marker. The up direction on the screen is aligned with the direction the receiver table is facing. Now that you have your heading, all you have to do is aim your sail in the direction of the objective and you'll be there in no time. Congratulations, you've reached the first objective in Raft and you can now start playing through the great storyline. Thanks for watching my beginner's walkthrough for Raft. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see new content that I release. I'll be making walkthrough videos for each of the storyline areas in Raft and posting them in the near future.